fathered by a skilled agent, Veronica faces her last test, where she takes on a group of vicious teenagers who hunt blonde young women to fulfill their bestial desires. In an interrogation room, Veronica, a five-year-old orphan, sits across from William, who carefully asks her about the death of her parents. To his surprise, the girl remains calm, so he hands her a paper with a maze and asks her to solve it. Veronica finishes the puzzle, then William proceeds to test her memory. The girl remembers their first house in great detail, which amazes the skilled agent and calls her perfect. Then, William invites Veronica to come with him to a place where exceptional people are trained to accomplish missions. The curious girl probes how he got his job, so William reveals that a bad man killed his family. Decidedly, Veronica asks if she can have ice cream, so the man smiles. Twelve years later, a teenage Veronica rows a canoe with William in a lake to train. Afterward, the man makes Veronica stand barefoot on wet rocks to prepare her for a chase in the night woods without shoes. William then advises her to avoid fighting on water, so the teenager asks to use a gun instead. The trainer gives her a gun and orders her to wound him with it. However, Veronica finds it blank, so William throws rocks at her. The trainer explains that guns without ammunition will cause a disadvantage. Veronica refuses the man's drink, and he orders her to run back to their car miles away before leaving with the canoe. At a diner, a group of teenage boys, Jameson, Daniel, Shane, and Nelson, hang out with Jennifer when the leader notices a new blonde waitress, Gwen. As he approaches Gwen to get her number, Jennifer wonders about their friend's obsession with blondes, Jameson's type. Elsewhere, William tests if the teenager can summon her power with only her will and strangles her. Surprised, Veronica fails to defend herself, so the man releases her and takes her position. To demonstrate how to escape the situation, he orders orders her to choke him until he's lifeless, and the trainee obliges. William tries to escape the young woman's chokehold, but his body falls unconscious. Terrified, Veronica stops and slaps him awake, and the trainer stares, bewildered at her immense power. Afterward, William spars with the unique teenager and records her assembling a gun quickly, preparing her to finish a group of vicious teens. At the diner, in formal attire, Jameson leads Gwen into the dark forest, followed by his friends. At a bar, William orders orders Veronica to approach the man in the brown sweater to test her skills which she obliges. The young woman asks the stranger to lead her to the restroom, so he grabs her hand. In the restroom, Veronica pretends to make out with the man, but she strangles him unconscious. Then, William enters and compliments her work, but Veronica is not satisfied. William slaps the man awake and makes up a scenario where the stranger kissed Veronica unwillingly, so the confused man apologizes. In the dark forest, Gwen runs for her life as the group of friends follows her with various weapons. When they catch up to her, the waitress screams as Jameson shoots her dead. Resting in an inn, William refuses to give Veronica pain relievers for her headache. Instead, she lies next to him in bed, wearing a towel. She tries to seduce her trainer, but William declines her advances. Soon after, William straps his trainee onto a stretcher chair and prepares an injection with truth serum and dimethyltryptamine or DMT, which will make her hallucinate and face her fears. Veronica claims she's not afraid of anything, so William tickles her to prove she's still human despite her extraordinary skills. Then, the trainer injects Veronica with the hallucinogen and secures the strap to protect himself from her heightened power. Afterward, William leaves Veronica as she begins to feel the substance's effects. She hallucinates, fighting a man who overpowers her. When her trainer appears and shoots her assailant, Veronica squirms in place and sees William approach her, calling her a failure. Afraid of William William's disappointment, the young woman professes her love, but the man thrusts a knife into her heart. Suddenly, William pours a pail of water on Veronica, bringing her back to her senses. The trainer asks about her hallucinations, so she reveals that she fears failing her mission. Curious, Veronica asks if her beloved trainer will kill her if needed, but William refuses to confirm her worries. He reminds her to remain sharp under any condition, especially if her opponent has the same substance. Then, he declares she is ready for her final test. Soon after, William drives his trainee to the diner and introduces her next target. They watch Jameson's group from outside as Veronica learns they have killed at least 10 women, with Gwen as their latest victim. Appalled, Veronica notices Jennifer, Shane's girlfriend, whom William reveals as the group's cover. When the young men leave the diner, Veronica exits the car to gather more intel. Moments later, Veronica sits before Jennifer and asks her about the menu. The young woman orders them a milkshake, so Shane's girlfriend looks at her straight 
strangely. As they receive their order, Veronica notices Jennifer in distress. However, Jennifer assures her she's fine, so Veronica tries to cheer her up. Insistent, Veronica confirms that her companion's problem is related to boys, so she shares her unrequited love with her trainer. Fortunately, Jennifer feels more comfortable and shares her worries about her boyfriend and his friends. She describes them as a pack of wolves who are an inch closer to tearing each other apart. Moreover, Jennifer wants to leave everything behind but feels restricted. Veronica urges her new friend and shares her mantra, live today like you're going to die tomorrow. Afterward, she bids goodbye and leaves with her takeout fries as Jennifer expresses her gratitude. In the car, Veronica reports that the group of friends is falling apart and asks when they'll start. However, William reveals that she has to do the mission alone as her final test. Days after, Jameson enters the diner and eyes the blonde young woman at the corner, who happens to be Veronica. The arrogant teenager takes his seat in front of the young woman, who claims to be new in town. Veronica secretly calculates her target as he takes her milkshake. Then, Jameson invites her to meet him at the same place on Saturday night with clean hair and red lipstick. Taunting, Veronica asks where they'll go, so the young man reveals they'll head to another world before exiting the diner. That Saturday, Jennifer helps fix Shane's tie, who reveals that he and his friends will go on a hunt as he kisses his girlfriend. Jameson fetches his friend, so Shane bids his goodbye to his girlfriend. Meanwhile, Nelson finishes dinner with his mother when his friend's car honks outside. He kisses his mother farewell and enters Jameson's vehicle with a bat. Afterward, they fetch Danielle, who dances in his house and enters the car with his axe. He wonders about their next prey and bites the steel blade of his weapon in excitement. Concurrently, Veronica dresses herself in red and writes, I love you on her mirror. Soon after, Jameson fetches his date from the diner and introduces her to his friends. Seeing them in a tuxedo, Veronica asks if they're an acapella group while Danielle flirts with her. Then, Jameson tells his friend not to scare their guest as they enter the car. On the road, Veronica asks if there will be other girls where they're going, which Jameson confirms. Thrilled, Danielle promises to introduce her to a girl named Annabelle, whom he claims is someone to die for, as the men laugh. Then, Nelson shows off his love for baseball and stands on his seat with his torso outside the window. Jameson speeds up while Nelson swings his bat and destroys the road signs in glee. Shortly after, Nelson hands Veronica the bat for her turn, so she stands in her seat. The young woman swings but misses the mailbox, claiming she wasn't ready. However, she is able to destroy the second mailbox and earns the men's praise. Impressed, Jameson blatantly tells his friends that they should keep her longer to enjoy themselves. Soon, Jameson takes a turn and parks the car on the side of the road. Seeing no one in the dark forest, Veronica asks if they're the first to arrive, which Jameson confirms. Then, the men invite their prey further into the woods as she stumbles on her heels. Jameson leads her to worn out couches and chairs where his friends gather. The men stare at her in silence, so Veronica asks what they usually do. In response, Danielle invites her to play a game, and the young woman offers them a drink from her flask. Unbeknownst to the young men, the trained teen lays the drink with hallucinogens as they take turns in taking a swig. However, Jameson declines and returns it to her. The arrogant man announces they'll play truth or dare with a twist. First, she must pick a dare from Danielle's bag and choose whether she'll have truth or dare. But if she chooses the same dare twice, she'll have no choice but to do it. Afterward, Jameson starts the game and picks a dare, but chooses to do the truth instead. Veronica asks about the worst thing he did, so Jameson reminisces about his first hunt. The arrogant young man reveals that he hunted a rabbit with his dad, but it limped away as he shot it at its hind legs. His dad told him to finish it with a buck knife, but the young Jameson was unable to when he looked at it in its eyes. Veronica and Shane find his story lame, but Jameson attests that letting the rabbit die a slow and painful death is worse than simply finishing it off like he's supposed to. Next, Veronica picks a dare, but chooses truth as well. So Jameson asks her the same question. The young woman reveals that she had a chance to save someone's life but didn't. Danielle probes for details, but Veronica declines and takes a drink from her flask instead, confident that she'll endure the hallucinogen's effects. Then, Shane refuses to participate, so Nelson picks a dare that tells him to kill something. So he picks a worm from the ground and eats it while Veronica looks at him in disgust. Afterward, Jameson learns that Veronica is not religious, but he swears that she'll ask God in her final moments. Strangely, Danielle tells his prey that real pleasure is experienced through pain and asks her to hit him, so she obliges. Then, Veronica asks when the other girls will arrive, claiming she feels outnumbered. Jameson assures her that they're having fun and proceeds with the game. The arrogant man accepts his 
his dare and kisses Veronica. When her turn comes, she picks the same dare twice, which says to get tied. Jameson ties her hands behind her back with Nelson's belt and picks out a dare. However, he chooses the truth, so Veronica asks him about Gwen. Alarmed, Danielle straightens up in his seat while Jameson claims he doesn't know what happened to her. The rest of the guys withdraw from the game, so Jameson chooses a dare for the tied-up woman, which reads, die. Veronica announces that she wants to go home, but the arrogant man changes the game into a hunt and asks her to run. Veronica feigns terror and screams for help as the friends laugh hysterically. Then, Jameson orders his friends to close their eyes, and advises her to run farther since the four friends cover more ground. Giving Veronica a five-minute head start, Jameson orders her to run for her life. Shortly after, Danielle excitedly runs to look for their prey and ignores the five-minute rule, so the others also start their search. In the distance, an untied Veronica stops feigning ignorance and prepares herself for her mission. Meanwhile, Danielle starts hallucinating as he sees two mascots ahead of him. He runs after the manifestation of his fears and swings his axe, which Veronica dodges. As a fight ensues, Veronica eventually grabs hold of the hysterical man's axe, who sees her as two mascots due to the lace drink. Frightened, Danielle turns to hide, but Veronica ends him with his weapon and wears his shoes. On the other hand, Nelson sees masked men circle him, so he calls for his mother in fright. Then, Veronica pulls his bat and disarms him before engaging him in a fist fight. The trained woman repeatedly charges at Nelson, whom he perceives as the masked thugs. Eventually, Veronica overpowers him while Nelson imagines kissing his mother. Veronica crushes his head with a rock, killing him instantly. Elsewhere, Jameson calls for Veronica but finds Danielle's corpse by a tree. Soon after, Jennifer arrives at their hideout to look for Shane, but she finds the group's leader on the couch. Jameson taunts his friend's girlfriend, who turns out to be his ex, and kisses her. Shortly after, Shane finds Jennifer's car and sees his lover tangled in a passionate exchange with his friend. Jameson provokes Shane, who hits him across the face multiple times. Despite this, Jameson confronts his friend, telling him that people like themselves cannot love, but Shane disagrees. He then reveals the truth about their hunt to the confused young woman who looks at them in terror. Then, Jameson points a gun at Jennifer, who now knows about their offenses, but Shane steps in the way. Abruptly, Shane tackles his friend to the ground and beats him unconscious. Afterward, he chokes his girlfriend despite saving her from his friend. However, as his hallucinations end, Shane's surroundings distort, so Veronica strangles him until he no longer breathes. Meanwhile, Jameson finds Nelson's dead body and follows Veronica's tracks. By the lake, the young woman tends to her dislocated nose after her encounter with Shane. Then, she hears the remaining young man applaud her work and approach her from the forest. Jameson tells her to sit so they can ask each other questions, and Veronica obliges. The arrogant man learns that his friends were drugged with truth serum and DMT, which caused their hallucinations. Then, Jameson reveals they have already killed 21 young women, including Veronica, to which she laughs. Afterward, Veronica confirms that Jameson had slept with Jennifer multiple times before and asks about his deepest fear. Jameson refuses to answer, and hits his prey across the face for the death of his friends. Then, he proposes marriage to Veronica so they can kill people together, but she declines. Since they haven't reached a middle ground, Jameson initiates a fight. Veronica eventually strangles the vicious young man as they exchange fists, just like what she did with William. Afterward, she forces the remaining contents of his flask into his mouth and drags him. Moments later, Jameson wakes to a rope tied around his hands and neck as he stands on a small rock. Veronica warns him that a wrong step will lead him to his death, so Jameson begs for his life. Then, Veronica proposes a game she calls One Question, so she asks him if he's religious. Taken aback, Jameson answers no as he refuses to beg God for help. Suddenly, he sees Gwen ahead of him, together with numerous girls he had killed with his friends. Terrified, Jameson cries as he faces his greatest fear, who approaches and pushes him to his death. Veronica watches the lifeless young man hang when William walks beside her and praises her work well done. Soon after, Veronica and William have pancakes together at the diner in celebration. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.